The film begins in the Middle Ages, where there's a notable absence of doctors and hospitals. Instead, itinerant barbers, possessing limited medical expertise, journey from city to city. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, the field of medical science is thriving, shifting the scene to a small, remote village in present-day England, a group of men diligently works in a mine. One of them is Rob, a young boy who, as part of his compensation for a day's work in the mine, is given a loaf of bread. On his way home, Rob encounters a man surrounded by women, entertaining them with his jokes, the man introduces himself as Barber, proudly claiming to be a healer with a remedy for all their ailments. While Rob is engrossed in Barber's words, his loaf of bread is pilfered. That evening, Rob returns home without the bread and joins his mother as she says a prayer before dinner, during the prayer, his mother starts feeling unwell, dismissing Rob's inquiries about her condition. They retire for the night, but Rob is awakened by his mother's agonizing screams in the middle of the night. Upon touching her, Rob perceives his mother's imminent demise, overwhelmed by a sense of helplessness, Rob hurries to find Barber, whom he had spotted in town earlier, seeking his assistance. Initially resistant, Barber eventually yields to the persistent pleas of the boy and accompanies him home. Upon arriving, Rob discovers his mother in the presence of the priest and other townsfolk. The priest anoints his mother's body with sacred oil, declaring her illness incurable. Upon noticing Barber's presence, the priest warns that anyone claiming to have a cure for the woman will be accused of practicing witchcraft, Barber, confronted with the impossibility of healing the woman, sadly acknowledges his limitations to the priest, resulting in her passing. The following morning, the townsfolk take away Rob's siblings, leaving him abandoned. Faced with desperation, Rob pleads with Barber to take him along, but Barber rejects the request and leaves the town. However, in a twist of fate, Barber discovers Rob hidden in his carriage one night, prompting a change of heart. Touched by the boy's predicament, Barber allows him to stay the night, and upon waking up to find Rob beside him the next morning, decides to keep the boy as a companion, as they embark on their journey, a newfound connection forms between Barber and Rob. The once rejected boy becomes an unexpected companion, adding an unforeseen dimension to Barber's solitary travels, years later, a mature Rob travels to a new town alongside Barber, delivering the same persuasive speech that once captivated him in his hometown. Together, they stage entertaining performances to attract more patients. In one town, a farmer approaches them with a toothache, and just before Barber extracts the tooth, he requests Rob's assistance in restraining the man, struggling to see clearly, as Rob touches the farmer, he experiences the same sensation he felt during his mother's death, foretelling the farmer's impending demise. Disturbed by this revelation, Rob tries to warn Barber, who dismisses his concerns and even makes light of them. Later that night, leaving a bar, they are confronted by a group of men accusing them of causing their friend's death. Blaming Barber for practicing witchcraft, the men lock him inside his carriage and set it ablaze. Fortunately, Rob manages to rescue Barber and tends to his injuries far away from the hostile town, in a moment of curiosity, Rob questions Barber about performing surgery on a deceased body, but Barber, visibly uncomfortable, sternly warns him to never bring up the topic again, emphasizing the dire consequences of being accused of witchcraft by the church. As time passes, Barber makes a gradual recovery, but a growing uncertainty creeps in as his eyesight starts to fade. Seeing his mentor's struggle, Rob pleads to assist, having grown up observing Barber's treatments. They journey to another town, where Rob takes on the challenge of his first amputation, eventually attracting a growing crowd seeking their help. With diligent practice, Barber acknowledges Rob's healing abilities, and amid the celebrations, a woman suggests taking Barber to the town's healer, introducing a potential solution to his vision loss and paving the way for a new chapter in their journey. Initially, Rob pays little attention to the woman's suggestion, dismissing the idea that anyone can treat blindness. However, as Barber's vision worsens, he becomes more open to the possibility. They visit the healer, who agrees to perform surgery on Barber's eyes. Days after the procedure, Rob removes the bandage and discovers that Barber's vision has fully recovered. Impressed by the healer's skill, Rob inquires about his training. The healer reveals that he learned everything in a place called Isfahan. When Rob asks about Isfahan's location, the healer points to it on a world map in the Middle East. He informs Rob that the renowned Ibn Sina, a Muslim physician, is the world's greatest healer and teaches there, possessing unparalleled wisdom and knowledge. This revelation opens up new horizons for Rob and Barber, the healer informs Rob that Ibn Sina resides in a place where Christians are not readily accepted, suggesting sarcastically that Rob may need to pretend to be Muslim or Jewish. After Barber makes a full recovery, they depart from the town, 
continuing their healing journey with more patience, expressing his aspiration to go to Isfahan and train under Ibn Sina to become a healer, also known as a Hakim by the Arabs, Rob is met with disappointment as Barber dismissively laughs it off before heading to sleep for the night. Despite Rob's earnest desire for further learning, Barber's response leaves the future uncertain for the aspiring healer. The next day, Barber wakes up to find Rob gone. He catches up, helps him reach the docks, and gives extra money, bidding farewell. A year later, Rob is in Egypt, getting a haircut to fit in. He joins a group heading to Isfahan, mimicking how Jews pray to blend. During the journey, he spots a pretty girl but keeps his distance, afraid of being caught, entering Seljuk territory, a northern nomadic tribe infamous for their brutality, their leader points out the grim reality, a nearby town filled with lifeless bodies. The Seljuks, convinced of their divine mandate to punish sinners, have left a bloody trail behind. In the midst of this horrifying scene, the group hears the cries of a child and discovers a young girl as the sole survivor among the townsfolk. Despite the risks, Rob convinces the group to bring the girl along. The woman he had observed earlier, Rebecca, generously lets the young girl ride with her. That night, after Rebecca informs Rob about the young girl's illness, he attempts to bring down her fever. While attending to her, Rebecca reads the story of Aladdin to both of them. Subsequently, Rob leaves the two and returns to his camp as the young girl falls asleep, upon awakening, Rob discovers Rebecca is gone, and he's left with one other man. Together, they press on, but exhaustion takes its toll, and the man succumbs. With little energy left, Rob perseveres and eventually reaches Ispahan, upon his arrival, Rob eagerly expresses his desire to study medicine under Ibn Sina to the men, who demand money or a recommendation letter. Lacking both, they forcefully expel him, leading to a beating. Upon regaining consciousness, Rob finds himself in a bed, treated by a compassionate man. As he recovers, Rob's curiosity about medications and his aspiration to become a Hakim unfold. One day, he is summoned to class, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his unexpected journey. During class, the man who treated him is about to start, prompting Rob to express gratitude for Ibn Sina's support. Laughter ensues when Mirdin reveals they are in Ibn Sina's physics class, making Rob realize that the man who treated him was Ibn Sina. In the following weeks, Rob attends class with Mir Din, intrigued by Ibn Sina's teachings. Gradually, he learns more about medicine and impresses Ibn Sina by demonstrating how to fix dislocated shoulders. The next morning, while walking with Mir Din, they meet Merdin's uncle, Bar Capra. He warmly greets them and introduces them to the woman set to be his future wife, only to discover it's Rebecca. Despite their shared history, they feign unfamiliarity during the wedding celebrations. Before parting, Rob hands Rebecca the storybook she had read during their journey, on the wedding night, still grappling with heartbreak, Rob ends up with another woman. Sensing her impending death, he rushes her to the institute for a cure. Ibn Sina notices and questions Rob's actions. Rob reveals that the woman won't survive the night due to a scorpion bite. After successfully treating her, he confesses to Ibn Sina about his unique ability to sense impending death. Ibn Sina advises Rob to see his ability as a gift, not a curse. They are then summoned to the Shah's palace, where they witness the Shah mutilating a messenger from the Seljuks. The Shah's actions lead to a chain of events, the Seljuks retaliate by sending a man with the Black Death to Ispahan. Chaos ensues in the market, and attempts to escape are blocked when the Shah orders the gates closed, amidst the turmoil, Rob learns that Bar Capra has left, leaving Rebecca alone. Rushing to her house, he finds her trying to reduce her fever. He brings her to the institute, where she eventually recovers. With the daily death toll on the rise, Rob discerns that the disease is spreading through fleas commonly found in rats. In response, a potent poison is created to eliminate the rat population. As days pass, people begin to recover, and the city reopens for unrestricted movement. During this period, Rob and Rebecca share a final day together, Coinciding with Bar Capra's return to Ispahan, subsequently, Ibn Sina assigns Rob a patient suffering from a sickness resembling the one that took his mother's life. Despite being unable to save the man, Rob takes the body to a secluded tunnel within the city for dissection. Delving into the organs, he identifies the sickness as inflammation of the appendix. Venturing even deeper, Rob illustrates organ pictures and meticulously records his discoveries as he proceeds, Rebecca falls ill, leading Mir Dan to examine her and discover that she is expecting Rob's child, not his uncle's, as his uncle is unable to have children. 
Despite Merton's caution about the potential threat from the local priests, known as the Mullahs, Rebecca secretly heads into the city to share the news with Rob, meanwhile, a follower of the Mullahs exposes Rabe as a fraud and reveals his involvement in dissecting a body. Rob is then accused of necromancy, the act of communicating with the dead to predict the future. As he is taken into custody, he notices Rebecca tearfully watching the events unfold. Concurrently, Bar Capra discovers Rebecca's pregnancy, days later, Rob stands before the Mullahs, accused of necromancy alongside Ibn Sina, and they are thrown into jail, blamed for the Black Death. In prison, Rob shares his knowledge of the human body with Ibn Sina. Simultaneously, the Shah, suffering from the side sickness, summons the Mullahs to release them for his treatment. However, the Mullahs threaten the Shah, implying the Seljuk leader would be a better ruler. After their departure, the Shah sends his men to bring Ibn Sina and Rob, demanding a cure by cutting him open. Rob agrees but negotiates Rebecca's safety. Nervously, he successfully removes the Shah's appendix. Meanwhile, the Seljuks, supported by the Mullahs, invade the city, causing mass destruction, upon the Shah's recovery, anticipating his imminent death, he mounts his horse and prepares for battle. In this moment, he directs Ibn Sina and Rob toward the city's exit, and they depart along with their families. Nevertheless, Ibn Sina decides to stay back in Isfahan, driven by the needs of his patients and the desire to remain close to his books. In the subsequent years, Rob, accompanied by Rebecca, returns to England, where he establishes the nation's inaugural hospital. Barbara employs familiar slogans in an attempt to attract patients, only to discover from a child that everyone is at the hospital. Barbara learns that Rob is still alive, prompting him to head towards the hospital to reconnect with him and his new family. The story shows how learning, inner strength, and kindness can change lives even when things are tough. It encourages people to think about gaining wisdom, navigating relationships, and discovering hope and meaning in unexpected moments. Thank you for watching.